Hi, in this tutorial, we are going to start with reading a file in Java. So basically in this tutorial, we are going to write a Java program that will be able to read from a file and we will display the contents of the file in the console. So this is basically known as file IO, which is file input output, which means that we are going to perform input and output operations or read and write operations inside of a file using our Java program. So the first step is to create a file and we will create a file vishal.txt. The second step is we are going to use the file input stream class object to make the file available for reading operation. Now file input stream is an inbuilt Java class. We can use the object of this class and we can make the file available for the read operation for our Java program. Next step is to use read operation to perform reading the character using the do while loop. So we will create a do while loop and we will call the read function using the file input stream class object and therefore we are going to perform reading of characters. Now the read operation will return minus one on reaching the end of the file. So whenever it returns minus one, we are going to put the condition inside the while loop. So if it returns minus one, this means we have reached the end of the file and we do not, we do not no longer need to read the characters from the file. So the question is, why do we need file input stream object to make, to read the file? Now a Java program will be able to access the file using the file input stream object. Now what we're going to see in this step is change the integer value to character using explicit conversion. We will get back to this last point in the Eclipse only and we will start writing our program. All right, so we were talking about what is the use of file input stream and basically what exactly is stream and why we need streams. So basically whenever your Java program wants to perform the IO operations, which is the input output operations, the Java needs to create a stream so that it can handle the input output operations. Some of the examples are taking input from keyboard or reading and writing files stored inside of the disk. In this manner, our Java program will be able to perform the read write operations. So now let's move on to our Eclipse IDE and start the programming part. So here you can see we have a main function. The very first step is to create, create a file input stream object all right so we have file input stream object and let's call it as fin and initially we are going to not create an object or we are not going to instantiate this fin object we are just assigning the reference it as null now you can see here that in the file input stream object there is a red line so if you will hover your mouse on this, it will show you a suggestion that import this java.io.file input stream. So click on it and it will quickly import this file input stream java.io.file input stream. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go on our project, which is thinkx text. This is our project. What we are going to do is we are going to cl right click on it, go inside new, and here I will click on file, and we will create a file name with vishal.txt, and I will click finish. Now remember, do not place vishal.txt file inside of your package or source folder, because if you will do that, your Java program won't be able to access this vishal.txt. 
and place this visual.txt in the same project where you have your thinkxtext.java. All right, let's move on to another, the next step. Next step is to instantiate our fin object. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the new operator to instantiate the file input stream class object like this. Now the file input stream when you're instantiating this class it requires an input inside the brackets which is the name of the file that you wish to read. In our case it is vishal.txt. Now if I will again hover my mouse on the you can see there is a red underline here so I will hover my mouse and it will show me some quick fixes. So click on the second one which says surround with try catch. So it will quickly surround this line with a try catch statement. And now you can see the exception that this is more likely to throw is the file not found exception. In that case, what we are going to do is we are going to print here that file not found. All right, so now we have done our first step. The next step is to read the characters from the file because now the file is available for the read operation. So here I'm going to call the read function. You can see here, this is our read function and it also shows that it reads a byte of data from the input stream and this method block if no input is yet available. And you can see that it returns the next byte of data or minus one if the end of the file is reached as we have seen in the presentation. So now I will call the file.read operation. Now since this read function can return minus one, I will have to create a new variable which is of integer type which is used to track whether we have reached the end of the file or not so that we will be able to track it and then in the do while loop we can actually place it so i will create do while loop here and inside the while i can clearly write that continue reading all the characters until and unless the value of track is uh, equal to minus one. So track not equals to minus one will give me something like this. Now, if you will, you can see here it, there is a red underline under the read object, read function. So just hover your mouse and again surround it with try catch. Now here there is an IU exception and here I'm going to write a message that it is not capable of reading the file so i'm going to write cannot read file all right so now we have created a file vishal.txt and now our java program has access to this file and it can now read it from the file and we have also created uh, we have also called the read function to read characters from the file and since the characters from the file will uh, go to this track variable if it is equal to minus one you can see we will have to place do while loop here do should come here and this while should come here all right so in this do while loop you can see that we are actually trying to read the characters. So this read function will read a particular character and it will return the character. If the value is minus one, we will stop the do while loop. Now, if the character is not minus one, it will, uh, since track is an integer variable, which you can see here, it is an integer. The character will get converted into a, an, into integer, right? So we will have to, if we want to display 
the track variable or the characters of the file we will have to convert this track variable into a character form so this is actually the last step that we were we have seen in the presentation that we will have to explicitly convert the track variable into a character value so now this is our whole program now this is our vishal.txt let's write some data inside this all right so i've just written some random data in this file let's save it and this is our java file let's save it all right so let's run this program and see whether it is able to read from the file or not so now you can see it is actually reading the file but after every character it is going to the next line so we will have to make a fix here here you can see we are writing the print line function which basically appends a whole next line so we will just make it print let's run this again and now you can see it has displayed the characters of the whole file so now we have actually we are successful in reading data from a file and displaying it in the console in the next tutorial we are going to see how we can actually read the data and also write the data to some other file we will create a program that will be able to copy data from one file to another in the next tutorial so that's all for this tutorial thanks for watching